uh, kill you makes you stronger. As promised, I've got U.S. Senator Tom Cotton on the phone line this morning from Washington, D.C. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. It's great to be on with you. I appreciate you calling in. Several things to talk about and not a whole lot of time, and I know you're a busy man anyway, but uh, as I look on CNN this morning, uh, breaking news, and I know one of the things that uh, that we had thought about talking about was what's going on between Russia and Syria, and something is going on there right now, I believe. Yeah, you know, Russia is continuing to its military buildup in Syria. Uh, this is really the first time in two generations in which Russia has asserted itself as a power broker in the Middle East. Uh, it's been one of the longest-standing, least uh, controversial, most well-understood bipartisan policies that Russia shouldn't be a power broker in the Middle East. Uh, but now, increasingly, they are because of President Obama's failed Middle East policy, his hasty withdrawal from Iraq, his refusal to lead in Syria, and most recently, the catastrophic nuclear deal with Iran. This has put the forces uh, of uh, repression uh, and uh, terror on the march in the Middle East and it's going to be very dangerous for the United States. What do we need to be doing differently? Well, you know, there's a lot of things that we failed to do that brought us to this point. There's no quick way to turn it around, but I would take a few immediate steps. As General David Petraeus, the former commander in both Iraq and Afghanistan and the Middle East abroad, as well as CIA director, testified to our Armed Services Committee just two weeks ago, we should... Uh, set up safe havens in southern and northern Syria, not only as a humanitarian measure, but primarily as a security measure, to give the forces opposed to uh, Bashar al-Assad and Vladimir Putin and the Ayatollahs there the space they need to regroup and begin to work. This is exactly what we did in Iraq uh, for the Kurds throughout the 1990s after the Gulf War. Um, second, I would just make it perfectly clear to Vladimir Putin that if Russia violates the airspace of Turkey, a NATO ally to which we are bound by treaty uh, to defend, that Turkey will take whatever measure, measures they need to defend their airspace, and the United States will stand with them. Uh, third, I would tell Iran that if they don't immediately withdraw all of their troops from uh, Syria, that we will repudiate the nuclear deal. There will be no sanctions relief, and in fact, there will be additional sanctions imposed. And then fourth, I would look outside the Middle Eastern uh, sphere as well, because this is Vladimir, this is just one front in Vladimir Putin's effort to reestablish Russia as a global superpower. I would look to Europe. I would tell Ukraine that we're going to provide them the defensive weapons they've been so desperately asking for. I would give them more intelligence they need to defend their borders. And I would begin at least rotationally deploying on a temporary basis the American troops in Western Europe to countries like Poland and Latvia and Estonia to show Vladimir Putin that he can't push the United States around. Let's change uh, directions just a little bit and talk about the National Defense Authorization Act that the Senate recently passed. So the National Defense Authorization Act is uh, one of the few bills, one of the very few bills that still passes every single year with bipartisan support going back over 50 years. Um, I helped write that bill as the chair of the Air and Land Power Subcommittee on the Armed Services Committee, um, and we passed it through the Senate yesterday with 70 votes. Just goes to show you that it's still a bipartisan um, bipartisan belief in Congress that we need to support our troops, provide them the pay and the benefits they deserve, and the weapons and equipment and training they need to fight and win our wars, which hopefully means to deter our wars from happening to begin with. Yet President Obama has continued to threaten a veto over this bill, not because of any specific contents in the bill, but because he is demanding a dollar-for-dollar -dollar increase on other domestic spending, for every dollar that we want to spend on our defense budget. And I just think that fundamentally misunderstands the priorities of the American people and our federal government. The first job of our government is to keep America and keep Americans safe. And a dollar spent on a soldier or a submarine or a fire aircraft is very different from the dollar spent on a Fort Barrel project uh, for some congressman or senator. I hope the president reconsiders, and if he doesn't, then I hope the Democratic senators and congressmen who supported this bill vote to override his veto so we can show our troops and we can show the world that we stand together when it comes to keeping America safe. We're visiting live with U.S. Senator Tom Cotton this morning, and we're going to talk a little bit now about Social Security Disability Insurance. Uh, more than 140,000 Arkansans rely on this. Senator, is this a program that, that's working as it should, and if not, what needs to be done? Uh, no, Social Security Disability really is not working as it should, and we can, we can tell that by the fact that it has exploded in growth over the last 
30 years or so, it's gone from you know, something like $25 billion a year to $200 billion. We can also tell it by the fact that it's going bankrupt. Social Security Disability has been running deficits for years now, and next year it will run out of money if the Senate and the Congress uh, don't act. That means that everyone who depends on Social Security Disability will get an immediate across-the-board cut in their checks by 20%. That could be devastating for the people who truly depend on Social Security disability because they have disabilities that prevent them from holding any kind of job. There are many measures that we need to take to reform Social Security disability. One I've championed with Democratic Senator Joe Manchin from West Virginia is to encourage people to return to work from Social Security disability. If they have a disability, to get them the kind of rehabilitation they need, the kind of treatment they need, to create incentives to leave disability and get back to work. That's good for taxpayers. It's good for the people who are truly disabled and can't get back to work. It's good for seniors who right now face a raid on the old age uh, trust fund of the Social Security Trust. And it's good for people who need to be working, who need the dignity and the self-respect of getting back to the workforce and providing for themselves and their families. And that's the legislation I hope that we can move forward to help stave off the uh, bankruptcy of the Social Security Disability Trust Fund and also protect the people who really and truly rely on that uh, Social Security Disability check each month. I'm reading from a news release from your office that I received earlier this week. It starts out this way. This past week, Democrats chose death over human life when they blocked a bill to prohibit late-term abortions. Comment on that. Well, abortion can be a very divisive issue in our society. I am strongly pro-life. I think we should take every measure we can to protect human life. But I think everyone can agree that we shouldn't, shouldn't permit abortion in this country when a baby is capable of surviving outside of its mother's womb. And we had legislation that would have said, that would have prevented abortion in the late term of pregnancy after the 20th week in which modern science now demonstrates conclusively that a baby can, in fact, survive. We even had young children on, in the Congress the day we voted on this legislation who had, in fact, been born after just 20 weeks of development, and they survived. Only seven countries in the world permit abortion after the 20th week. Countries like North Korea and China, is that really what a civilized society like the United States should permit? Uh, again, I, I understand that abortion can be a very divisive uh, issue for many Americans, and uh, there's much debate about the propriety of abortion or certain restrictive measures in the early weeks of a pregnancy. But after the 20th week, when a baby is capable of surviving outside of its mother's womb, I think we should all agree that we need to protect that kind of human life. Anything else that I didn't ask that you might want to comment on this morning? No, it's been very thorough. I appreciate the time. Absolutely. Well, one final question, and, and it, it it's also very important. What about those sand lizards? <laughs> <laughs> They're doing great. Uh, you know, whenever we uh, um, get into the playoffs last year, I thought we had a chance to win and go all the way. Unfortunately, we came up just short. But, hey, we're still undefeated, still number one. Still got a tough road to hoe. But uh, I think, you know, my father, who's been the pub PA announcer at uh, – San Luis football for almost 30 years is confident this is going to be the year that he gets to announce over a state championship team. The team that we follow, the Hamburg Lions, had their season end right there uh, last season, uh, Senator. Well, I, and, I was sorry to see that, but I think everybody <laughs> there in Hamburg can understand that I was rooting for my home team, San Luis. Certainly understand that. Hey, good to talk to you. I appreciate you giving up your, uh, your valuable time, and uh, you have a great day and a productive day. Always good to talk with you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. That is U.S. Senator Tom Cotton visiting with us this morning, a couple of minutes away from uh, the top of the hour. And uh, we'll play uh, 